Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be drawing a fish. This is the second time I've done a How to Draw Fish video, but the first one was many years ago. Um, let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and get into some basic guidelines for drawing uh, the body of the fish. All right, so last time I did a video, it was of a Japanese carp, or koi, fish. This time I'm doing what's called an electric blue ram, and I think you will find by the time I'm done that it's quite a beautiful uh, fish to illustrate. Notice that I'm using kind of a brown colored paper. That's going to help to make the colors pop when we get uh, towards the end of the video. But for now, let's pay attention to the shape of this fish's body. Very wide compared to how tall it is. I'd say at least twice as wide as it is tall. Notice how small the mouth is with this type of fish. Of course, different varieties have much larger uh, mouths. And then I uh, really was struck by this little sort of handle here between um, the body itself and uh, the tail fin that we're going to get to in a moment. There's this little, it flattens out a little bit here. So that's an interesting detail that you can catch. Let's go ahead now then and add, uh, I'm going to add the tail fin and uh, the dorsal fin, this large, single large fin on the back. All right, so you can see with the tail fin that, uh, you know, the classic fish's tail fin sort of splits into two clear parts. This fish doesn't have such an obvious uh, divide, but I think that you can get a little hint of it in there. Um, but the key thing I would say is to pay attention to the size of it um, at its uh, uh, maximum height it's probably almost equal to the maximum height of the body. Uh, and then this, um, what you see here is really more of a guideline. Um, it's not the actual shape of the final dorsal uh, fin, which kind of splits, you're going to see later, into individual almost feather-like uh, shapes. But we've got at least a couple of more fins to go uh, along the bottom of the fish. Okay, so these are called the pelvic fins, and notice uh, where they are, are based. They come right at this point where the body um, almost reaches a sort of an angle down here. And this first line was more or less a continuation of the line of the body, just in terms of placing that. Notice that there are two of them uh, that sort of mirror one another. I believe that's the only... Um, area of the fish where you have the two different fins like this. And back here is the unfortunately named anal fin. I didn't realize that that's what it was called. Do marine biologists chuckle every, they, every time they refer to this fin? I don't know. Uh, let me know, those of you who are marine <laughs> biologists. But let's go ahead now and get to drawing the eye uh, as well as maybe just the, the lips here. I don't know if lips uh, would be the right word, um, but uh, the uh, you know finishing off the mouth of the fish. So I thought I'd go ahead and just add this area of the gills, um, and then we can be done with these basic guidelines. Uh, but let's start with the eye, uh, noticing the size of it and the location. Um, I'd say it is about a third of the distance uh, from the top to the bottom, and maybe slightly, ever so slightly uh, closer to the top. Uh, contour line then to the lower one. Um, notice that uh, the lip, the upper lip, seems to overlap the lo lower lip rather than the other way around. And uh, as far as this gill goes, this is to, you know, uh, to this particular breed of fish, it's, it's almost like a flap, it looks like, that covers up uh, the area of the gills. Now there is another fin here called the pectoral uh, fin, but it's in this case of this type of fish, it's very nearly transparent, uh, and I think I'm going to have to just add that at the end. But let's go ahead, I'm going to sharpen my pencil, and we're going to get into drawing some of the details real time. So as I said, um, this uh, dorsal fin actually splits apart, especially uh, at the front, uh, in this particular breed of fish, into these like feather-like shapes. And uh, so I'm going to do that and, and kind of erase as I go the uh, contour line, the sort of artificially smooth contour line that I'd created for myself. As these feather-like shapes continue, they sort of lean more and more uh, to the right as I'm drawing it. And then they also sort of fuse together a little more. So what I'm going to do actually starting right now is to begin just drawing the lines and dividing this and having it sort of uh, feather out or uh, fan out, I guess would be the right uh, phrase, as it gets um, closer to this 
edge. And um, once it reaches a sort of a point right here, um, I'm just going to throw in, you know, there's probably a, 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 a particular number of these uh, in real life, but I'm, I'm kind of uh, just winging it, to be honest. Um, but in any case, even as you go uh, pretty far back on here, you're going to see individual um, contours until you get to the very end, and then it finally does sort of fuse together, seems to me, into a single uh, thing. So, let's go ahead and erase these extra little uh, lines that are left over from the beginning. You can see how that guideline helps you to get this stuff in the right place. And uh, maybe we can get into drawing the scales. Now this is of course going to be very time consuming uh, to try to fill up this entire thing with scales. I think the, one of the tricks to doing it is to create a grid-like pattern um, starting say up here just above the eye and you can maybe lightly begin to put a series of lines that you know gradually become um, slightly diagonal. Don't go too crazy with this heading you know off in this kind of a uh, direction. It really is going to be more more gently uh, diagonal, let's say. And the what you're doing is preparing, you're laying the groundwork for putting in the scales and if you put these lines in place to begin with it's going to make it a lot easier. Now uh, it could be pretty boring to watch me do this line by line so let's go ahead and um, zip through this in time lapse, but you're going to see me go, you know, go continue this, and as I get closer to the tail, you're going to see these lines get closer together, and then I'm going to come back and do the opposing diagonal area. All of this uh, creating the uh, guidelines for us placing the scales later on. Let's go ahead and do this all in time lapse. Okay, so you can see how I did that, and I think the key thing is once you get these sort of gently diagonal lines here, as you come in to do the opposing um, diagonal lines, pay attention to these diamond shapes that you're creating, because inside each one of the diamond shapes is where uh, one of the curved um, scales will go. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of start dropping that in. And So you, you need to have these um, diamond shapes kind of the proper, um, I would say, length and or, or height maybe from top to bottom. If, if you had them stretched out too much, it, it wouldn't work uh, for fitting in the classic rounded scales that we imagine. But you can see once you've got that in place, it really does help you a lot for getting the scales uh, in place in a regular, logical way. So, again, this is another one of these things that I would be definitely putting you all to sleep if you watched me draw each and every one of these scales. So let's go ahead and zip through this in time lapse, and uh, we'll be back to see if there are any, well, I'm sure these other fins have a few details left to go. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and finish this off. All right, so we basically got the scales in place. You can see, even for me, I found uh, that the, the, the shape of my guidelines was messing me up as I got down here, and it, it sort of gets a little messy as I try to keep the scales uniform. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, you got to be extra careful, I suppose, when you're putting in those initial guidelines to make sure that the little diamond shapes are of a similar uh, size. In any case, now it's time to get on to um, uh, putting in a few lines for the um, sort of divisions of the uh, tail fin. Um, this one really just fanning out, not so uh, tricky I don't think to do. Although one thing I noticed in, in sort of studying photographs that it's not quite so clear cut, this division here. Um, it's a little more subtle as the scales um, change into the uh, tail fin area or the is that what that's called yeah the tail fin that's what i'm going to call it anyway <laughs> and these other ones more or less you're doing the same thing you know you're following the the contour of the initial um fin that you drew and having the lines just sort of fan out a little bit i think sometimes there's a little bit of a 
contour at the you know out outer edge so if you want to get that in there as an extra detail uh, I noticed though that these um, pelvic fins had much more tightly packed lines in terms of the the texture on these fins so these ones stand out among all of the other ones as having the lines much closer together and this is getting us pretty near to the end of our uh, drawing duties. Although, um, let's have a look at the eye here and note that this interior circle is the black one. This is probably the actual eye. This sort of exterior thing almost looks like the sort of flesh that supports the eye or allows it to sort of dart from left to right and so forth. And this particular breed of fish has uh, an interesting pattern that we're going to get to primarily in the uh, color, but there's like an orange area here at the at the front, and then the rest of the fish is blue, and then you get like a, a little orange bits going across certain parts of the um, uh, the fins. But I suppose what I want to do right now, uh, unusually, is I'm going to take um, an ink pen. Uh, let me go ahead and grab that. Maybe I can say a word or two about it. So yeah, I've got a, a Pigma Micron here, my sort of inking pen of choice, permanent ink pen. I use the O8, which is quite thick. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just ink all of these lines, trying to use a light touch. The truth is, in nature, you're not going to see lines around these individual um, uh, scales. It's much more subtle than that, but uh, this is more of like an illustrated version of the fish, and I think uh, adding line work like this is going to allow the colors to pop when I come in. I'm probably going to do it primarily with um, colored pencil. And that's what's really going to make this whole drawing start to... Um, it's going to kick it up to a much higher level than what you see right now. So let's go ahead, all in time lapse, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ink all of these lines. Notice I'm using a light touch though, I don't want to use bold thick lines. <laughs> I used a uh, kneaded eraser here. It's a nice one for just clearing away all those initial uh, pencil guidelines. And I'm going to get into the coloring. And what I'm going to do is take a uh, orange colored pencil and begin coloring in this interesting pattern that you see on the head of this particular fish. If you want to reproduce uh, this particular drawing the way I'm doing it, you'll want to follow along and try to, you know, get the orange. Uh, in the areas where you see me doing it. Notice that it begins to circle around the lower part of the eye and then it stops. Uh, I'm going to get to this later because the eye actually has um, different shades of orange and red and even a bit of yellow in it, uh, at least um, you know from the photos that I was studying. But um, pay attention here. This is where you get an interesting pattern. Up here, the, some of these scales uh, turn orange just in this area there's like a pocket of them and I'm choosing rather than having multiple colors on the same scale to just color scale by scale but notice it sort of comes up and then comes back down and then somewhere around here as it's reaching the eye is um, where you can sort of delineate this pattern of the orange versus the blue. Um, my approach here is to just get all of the orange in and I'll do this real time, but when we get to the blue, I'm going to be able to speed through that, hopefully. Notice that this lower lip area goes orange for this particular breed of fish. The electric blue ram. Interesting name there. Uh, and you, get, you can see a little visible orange along this lower part of the head. And that is getting us near to um, where we don't have to add any more orange. I'd say all across the very tips of these sort of feather-like uh, dorsal fin segments, you're going to see uh, orange. Just the very tips. 
if you want to do this sort of realistically. And then I noticed as you got to the very edge back here on the other side of the uh, dorsal fin, that orange just sort of goes away. But you might see a little bit of orange, again, just in the areas of the tip uh, of the fins. I wonder if this is true of a lot of different breeds of fish, that when there's coloration in this area, it, it tends to um, be mostly just at the very edge, the very far edge of it. Um, but boy, there's so many different kinds of fish out there, you could probably find an exception to any rule you try to come up with. Now this is interesting. I noticed in photos that I studied there was a, a bit of orange creeping in uh, in this area, not in a bold way, but just like a hint of it. Shimmering maybe, and you might even have like the, um, depending on the lighting, the way light hits, you would see one color or the other. But yeah, getting a little hint here, maybe at the sort of edges of the um, individual scales will give you um, an added sense of realism. But that is basically it. You know, uh, I'm going to come in now and boy, talk about it being time to get a new pencil. <laughs> I'm still using this uh, old uh, blue pencil that I've been using for probably a few years now. And this is where we're going to want to kick it into time lapse, but I'll just show you a little bit what I'm going to be doing. All of these areas that are that I didn't color orange in that first, um, you know, in this first part of the the coloring section, they just all go blue, and you don't even have to really think about it. Just start coloring everything in blue. So let's do this all in time lapse. I'm going to finish uh, coloring in the whole uh, fish uh, blue, and then we'll probably come back and do some of these details in the area of the eyes. All right, well, I've got a sort of a base layer of the blue and the orange here. I feel like it needs uh, a little more um, definition to it, and so I'm pulling out a, uh, a significantly darker uh, blue to start adding just um, little hints of shade, especially here at the bottom. And, uh, you know, whether or not this is completely accurate to what you'd see in real life, it certainly, in, as an illustration, is going to help to make this look more three-dimensional. I think with coloring in general, shading in general, the more variety you can get in there, the more three-dimensional your picture is going to begin to look. So I'm going to be doing this uh, all along the bottom, sort of adding in uh, little extra darker bits, modeling, just to make it look a little more three-dimensional. I'm also going to bring in a white colored pencil and uh, go directly on top of this blue to create a sort of a lighter shade. Um, again, to, in hopes of getting this sort of shimmering uh, surface. But first, let's go ahead and do all of the um, modeling here, the sort of darker shading with this darker blue, maybe also a darker orange. Um, and then we can come back and, oh yeah, I still need to draw that uh, area around the eye. That'll be next for sure. Okay, let's get this done. Well, you can see what a big difference it makes when you add this white on top of the blue, especially if you've used a kind of a brown or gray or whatever toned paper to begin with. This white really starts to pop up off the page and add that extra level of um, three-dimensionality that I love to see in an illustration like this. But I think it is time for us to get into some of this coloring around the edge of the eye, uh, which is indeed... Um, got this bright red shade around the, I would say, sort of the left and right in particular from the photos that I was looking at. I'm going in with sort of an orangish red and then um, again, I don't know if this was, if this is something you'll see in all the different fish of this breed, but uh, the photo that I was looking at had uh, yellow at the top, which was an, a, a lovely little, you know, you, you're getting close to sort of like all the colors of the rainbow uh, in a way at this stage. And that's maybe getting us pretty close to the end of things. You're going to see me 
again in time lapse, maybe just do some final uh, shading all the way around. Some of this stuff, I think, just for the illustration purposes, uh, adding shading on uh, some of the orange bits and so forth to really uh, make this thing pop off the page a little more. Oh, but there is one last thing that we need to do, and that is to add um, this nearly transparent uh, pectoral fin, I believe it's called right here. I'm coming in with a uh, pencil to do this effect. It, when I looked at photos, boy, you could barely even see this fin because it is so transparent, more than just translucent. It's really, it's as if it was made out of some sort of flexible glass or something. You really just look right through it. And normally I would think, wow, this I don't know if this is going to look right <laughs> in terms of illustration, but I suppose to be accurate to um, the anatomy of the fish, I've got to add it. But I'm going to maybe just stick with pencil, and I suppose I should, maybe I'll do the outline uh, in ink so that it doesn't look like a mistake or something. Sometimes things that you see in reality don't translate into illustrations. Like there's no big black outline around the actual uh, fin in real life, but I feel like it's going to look better uh, in, as an illustration if we at least get one little you know, outline around the edge of it so that it becomes more visible there. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and add more shading throughout, and we'll be back with a few final words. Okay, well I must say it is tempting to bring out the beloved white gouache, my opaque white paint, to add further highlights, but I thought, no, let's keep this simple. Just colored pencils and ink show you what you can do with just those two materials. And uh, this white colored pencil really goes a long way towards giving that shimmer that we like to see, and also sort of highlighting this uh, transparent fin. Uh, but I suppose it is time now to say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like The Two Pencil Method. Uh, this has a whole chapter on drawing animals. Uh, the Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. Working on the sequel to that should be coming out soon. And Mastering Manga 1, 2, and 3, uh, my books that teach you how to draw in a manga style. I am so very grateful to all of you who have supported me by getting those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.